Hi everyone, welcome to Hillside Harvest Homestead where this morning we're working on training with the cow or my heifer in the milking stanchion. So I've already previously done training with her, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and get her in. I continue to work with her until she has her calf. So I'm gonna let her in and then um, explain to you the training that we've done with her. So we'll get her going. Hello. my animals are ready for this they're used to this um, I always milk my goats well I've got the cow in here so the goat was ready to come in as well but so what I've done with the cow is um, the first time that we put her in here the first couple times was actually without the stanchion in here and um, I just simply put her feed bin up here in the corner where her head would be with the stanchion. Got her used to just simply coming in here and eating. Um, she didn't like standing up against the wall like this and so I did have to push her um, to get her to stand, just simply stand against the wall and then I pet her while she's eating and then let her out. Then we put the stanchion in and again, she didn't want to stand up on the stanchion. She didn't want to stand up against the wall. But she came in and just easily just put her head right into the head stall. So we had to push her up against the wall again to get her in here. And she was really nervous um, when she found out that her head was in the head stall. And she was pulling back and trying to get out, you know. So um, all I did at that point was just pet her, make sure that she stands still for just a minute so that I can undo her head, you know, pet her, calm her down, and then let her out. Um, I don't want it to be a negative experience when she's in here, so I'm um, just, you know, I was simply trying to make it a calm place for her, um, a place that she enjoys coming because she gets food, and um, so uh, I did that. I got her on the same schedule as I have with the goats, um, which is twice a day, and she got used to that, so she was ready to come in and come eat. And all I would do for the first few times until she got used to the head stall was just simply feed her and then let her out. Um, and then once she was used to that, she'd pull back on the head stall a little bit and, and was fine with it, was not you know, scared of that. Uh, I let her go ahead and stay in an extra minute after she was done eating. Um, so I want her to learn to stand in the stanchion even without food. Um, I don't, what can typically happen is animals, I know with goats, I've dealt with this, um, and I work with them on it as well, that when you're milking them, they're used to eating, and then when they're done eating, they think you should be done milking, even though you're not. And so they get antsy, they don't want you to touch them, and um, they get real impatient, and they want out now. So, I don't like that and I don't want that to happen because sometimes you're not done milking by the time they're done eating. So I will let them stay in the stanchion a little bit longer and while I'm training I'll go around about in the barn. I don't go far. I don't ever leave them far while they're in this stanchion. Um, and I'll go about and do some other things, you know, like feeding baby goats or continue milking my goats. Um, things like that so that the cow stays in here a little bit longer and gets used to being in here just calmly, nicely. So, but while she is in here um, and I'm not busy with the goats, I will be petting her because again, we want to make this a nice environment for her, something that she enjoys and she does enjoy being pet. So, um, if you have a cow that's not used to being handled, then this is going to be a little bit more work. She is used to being handled, so that's been a real plus for us. Um, but that was something that I also worked on 
before we ever had the stanchion out in the field, I'd go out and go pet her. I'd go out and mess with her um, teats and just, you know, always just messing with her. I also worked on tying her up, um, which thankfully when we got her, she was used to that as well because um, she had been used as in 4-H when she was young. So she was used to being tied up. Um, but just, you know, continuing that training so that she doesn't forget that. Um, but those were all things that I worked on before the stanchion. So the stanchion part is like the last little bit before you have the baby, before you have the calf, um, which I do recommend working on this before they have the calf, um, just so that you don't have the pressure of you have to milk them out, whether they like being in the stanchion or not. You don't have the mood swing that the cow will usually typically have after they have a calf and where they can get kind of owly. Um, and they get really protective of their calf a lot of times. Um, they may stress out if they can't see their calf. Um, so there's just a lot of different factors if you are trying to train them after they've had a calf. So before they have a calf is the best time to start working with them. Um, so while she's in the stanchion, um, again, if I'm not working with my goats and doing things, I'm going around and I'm petting her and that's the best thing to do when you have a cow that is, isn't used to being handled. Um, get a brush, brush them all over their body and if they're not used to being handled I would recommend just simply brushing up along the top line um, and their neck and then getting used to have them getting used to you brushing here on the back of their leg. Um, eventually you know start moving under the belly. Um, those are areas that you need to be able to handle. Um, when they get comfortable with that, you can start working on the legs, um, being able to put your hands on their legs, um, and then start just um, running your hand over where the bag is um, so that they get used to that. And then what you want to do with the bag or with the teats is start pulling them as if you were stripping them so that they get used to the feeling. Um, Another thing that once they're used to being handled and they're used to you, they're um, um, secure with you, work on being able to push their leg back because you don't want their leg forward if you are milking because it gets in the way of the back. So that one takes a little more time. Um, they may kick a little bit. Um, it depends on your cow. You may have a real aggressive cow. She doesn't typically kick to kick at you. She just kind of kicks as a, you're bugging me, ugh, you know. So um, she doesn't actually like try to aim for you, but she will lift her leg. And, uh, but she hasn't done that actually in quite a while. So she's gotten used to me pushing, um, putting pressure on her leg. It does take some time because she's, you know, doesn't want to move her leg. But um, put some pressure, you can put it up on the joint. It keeps them from being able to kick um, as much. Um, you can also, like you do with horses, you put pressure down on the back of the leg where the tendons are for the, for the horses um, and try to get them to lift their leg and bring it back. That one takes a lot more time because um, they may, um, they'll typically want to kick a little bit more when you're doing, um, when you're touching the back of their leg and trying to lift their leg to get them to move it. So, um, so I would personally um, just work on pushing at the front of the joint um, where their leg is to get them to move it back. Um, and it takes time. She doesn't like to do it, so it takes a bit of pressure and a bit of moving. Um, I like to do it when she's eating because she's distracted and um, a little less irritable if she's eating So than if she's just standing doing nothing. So. Um, but those are things that we work with. Another thing that I work with, um, I've got all my milking stuff here, obviously, because I've got the cows. Um, I've got a bowl with warm water and a rag, which I use on the goats um, to clean their backs before I milk them. And I will use it on her to get her used to that feeling of a rag running on her back. <laughs> And the water under there and I will just rub all around her bag. Good girl. Good girl. 
Good girl. And if you're dealing again with a cow that's not used to being handled, just make it real quick, make it real simple. Um, again, you don't want to stress them out. You don't want it to be a negative thing for her. And from down here, I will mess with her teeth. Good girl. Good girl, Aaron. So that she hears me down here. Good girl. Lots of pets, so they know that they're doing what's good. And I would not recommend getting down at this point if your cow is still unsure of you. Um, and if your cow is kicking, get past that point first. Good girl. Because obviously you don't want to be down there, you don't want your head down there if they're still kicking. So, you know, make sure that you are keeping your safety first and uh, just wait until they're calm, until they're um, used to you touching them before you start putting your head and your body down where her legs are. Um, little girl. That's good. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Yeah. steps at a time um, it goes a lot quicker if again you make sure that they feel um, secure and they, it's a calm environment um, and they're confident with you they trust you it does go a lot quicker if you do that um, if you have a milking bucket that is noisy that has a handle on the pail that's something that also you need to get them used to so you can put it under them, touch them a little bit with um, the pail on the leg, put it under their body, let it um, jingle, you know, um, make the same noise that if the handle is hitting it. Um, all of those things you want to get your cow used to and do it before you're milking them. If you're using a milking machine, which we will be doing both, um, I want her to be able to do both. Um, and we don't have the monkey machine yet. I just ordered it. So um, we'll get it next week. But I'll plug it in so she hears the noise. And then, you know, I'll put the tubes around her, make sure she's getting used to that. So everything is um, not a surprise and not a shock. So um, that typically is just what you need to do for training. Um, you know, if you've got a nervous cow, a cow that's not used to people, um, it is going to take a little bit longer, so patience is essential. Um, a calm environment is essential for them, um, and a positive environment. So their food, being brushed, um, all of those things are going to help make the process smoother and more enjoyable for them. So, um, but that's it. That's all that you need to do. She has learned um, that when she comes out of here, she needs to back up. We don't have enough room in here for her to be turning around and all of that. So, um, but again, what I do, and I'll show you as we work on this, is um, I'll just undo her, come and take her head and help her back out. And we make it just a nice, simple process. Um, backing up, also something that I have worked on with her outside in uh, the pasture when I'm around going through gates, I back her up, you know, take her by the collar and put her back. So she already knows what I want from her when I'm pulling on her collar and telling her to back up. So um, all of that stuff has been really good to do for getting into this mansion. So it just makes the process easier. Um, you know, I mean, I didn't plan it that way that she would have to back out of the stanchion, but that's always something that you need with animals anyways, big animals especially, is to know how to back up. They need to know what your cues are to get them to back up. So, at this point, she's starting to finish up. I'm going to let her sit for a little bit, and, um, and then we'll let her go, and that's it and that's what we do and that's what we'll continue to do you don't have to do it quite as often once they know how to do it so 
you know, like I don't have to do it twice a day at this point because she knows how to do it. I still do it twice a day just because I want to give her a little extra food because um, we don't have a lot of pasture right now. So um, I'd like to give her a little bit of these extra cattle cubes, uh, which give her some nutrition that she needs, um, especially since she's going to be having her calf within the next month. I just want to give her a little, little extra feed. So, um, so I am doing it twice a day with her. I figure I'm out here with the goats. I might as well play with the cow too. So, um, but anyways, I'm just going to let her sit here. I'm going to mess with my goats in the meantime, get them milked out and then we'll let her go. So I'm done with my goats so I can go ahead and just let her out now. get everything ready for her um, so that she can just simply back out real quickly. Hang on, you're still in there. You're still in there. So that's it. That's how easy that is. Um, again, it was little steps that brought us to this point. Uh, so, and she did pee in the stanchion. So again, that's something that you know you need to keep clean because you're milking in that area. Um, if they go to the bathroom in there, it needs to get cleaned up so that you're not um, possibly getting. Um, bacteria in your milk that can cause E. coli and um, make you sick. So um, that's just upkeep of that. Cows are going to do that. That's okay. So, but anyways, easy way to do that. Um, again, small steps that lead up to that. Um, working with her, working with your cow out in the pasture, you know, little by little, just playing with them and then quietly bringing them in feeding them in your barn um, and then quietly feeding them in their stanchion. All of those things are great buildups to the end product of finally having them in there and milking them in there. Um, so anyways, that is it. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you learned something if you needed um, this information. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comments. We'd love to get back to you. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos, um, just go ahead and subscribe. Uh, make sure that you like the videos if you're liking them. 